what we lack in Nigeria, like Chinu Atebe said, is leadership. And when he wrote his book, The Trouble with Nigeria, he said the trouble with Nigeria is clearly and fairly leadership. We've had a situation where in our country, with our resources, with our potential, we still are lacking behind in every metric. Our state, Edo State in particular, by the projections in 2022 were 8 million people. But the unemployment level is appalling, particularly when you go to those under 40. We have a vast, talented young people. Everybody knows that Edo people has the energy, the intellect, the capacity. But one of my pain has always been the lack of use of this human resources that God has blessed us with. To couple with the vast lands that we have in our state, in my own side of the state, the, uh, the Edo South, we have vast areas in farmlands that are not able to be inhabited because of the trouble of insecurity and all that. For me, I will talk about more of the issues as we go down the campaign, but what I'm here for is a new deal and a new day for Edo State. I've come with a new direction, I've come with a new vision. Whatever we were doing before has not worked. You cannot continue the same thing and expect a different result. Sure. It's time for Edo people to do something different and choose the Labour Party. Because it's the only party that have now stood to say they are for the people. Because they brought out a candidate named Peter Obi that brought us all into the OPDM movement to fight for a Nigeria that works. I think what he did nationally we can replicate in our state. So I'm here to basically say, remember the word hit A, H-I-T-A. I'm honest, I have integrity, I'm transparent, and also have a fantastic attitude. Over the years has been those key things. Honesty, integrity, transparency, and an attitude and compassion for the people. I believe in the five C's, which I said earlier. And also, I believe that as Edo people and as Nigerians by extension, we are all created equal. We are all equal citizens. And the United States, they say this a lot, that all men are created equal and are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. Among that is liberty, the right to life, and the pursuit of happiness. But you cannot be happy if you don't see hope. So I came up with the word see hope, which signifies the following. Number one is security, S. What, what is our biggest challenge in our state? It's insecurity, where people cannot go to their jobs. Farmers cannot go to their farms. People are hungry, they have a land to plant, but they cannot, that is replicated elsewhere, but in our state, you can see that hunger is real. I'm not here to speak big grammar. Our people, they're hungry. I'm here to put food on the people's table. We get why we say our own people they suffer. We get the solution. Number one is soft uh, security problem, and our strategy is to democratize security so that every one of us will be security officers because security is personal. If we know our neighbors, if we know who is the stranger in our area, if the traditional councils can be part of the system, we can solve our security problem. Number two is the E in the CO. We we'll talk about education. There is no way. You can progress as a society if you don't invest aggressively in education. But I think what we've been doing in Edo State and Nigeria as well has not been tailored to the needs of the market. What I'm suggesting is to envision education that copies what others have done elsewhere. God has enabled me to travel across the world. I've seen education that is practical. For example, nine-year-old are building smartphones in Japan. People go through school by primary six level. They can fix, set up a table. They have skills, not just theory. So I'm proposing education that thinks about teaching five-year-olds coding to be able to become the next tech expert. So that by the time you finish secondary school, you have a skill. One of my surprises was when I traveled to the United States, I was among the few people who owned a home but could not fix the lights, could not fix the table, because they themselves can fix things. But I went through school, I was a very good student, but I didn't learn hand skills. So I'm thinking, let's combine theory with practical. So that by secondary school, when you earn it, you can either get a trade certificate to open a small business financed by the government to start earning a living. Because the secret to unemployment also, which is the second E, is small business empowerment. Because if you can hire one person, one person hire one person, there will be no unemployment. Because in America today, for example, there are 10 million open jobs, more people, jobs than people. We can do it in those states when we reimagine it. Then, because of that, let me quickly go to the hope. The hedge in the hope is healthcare. A healthy society is a productive society. It's wicked 
that our people do not have health insurance that can serve everybody, not just those that work or those that have money. In most parts of the world, those who are not working, the government covers for it. The current government is doing some things on health. We can build on that to make sure every Edo has access to simple, basic health care. We are not talking about brain surgery. We are just talking about simple, basic health care for all. So that's what we're going to introduce that does not cost an arm and a leg. Uh, another one we talk about is to see a hope. We talk about, oh, we're going to create opportunity. That O is opportunity for industrialization. Because one of the ways to create jobs is to really expand what we already have. In our state, we have the ancient city of Benin that is over a thousand years old. We will envision expanding Edo State, create new city centers that will bring in the foreign investors, which are already ready. They just need to have a transparent, credible government in place, and they will bring the funding. We believe that we can develop our state without relying on federal allocation, because foreign investors are looking for opportunity. The BlackRock is an example. They have trillions of, of dollars waiting for a place that, is, that has integrity, where their investment are safe, which is, talk, which is talking about the heat, honesty, integrity, transparency, and a, a, a fabulous attitude. So that people can be sure when they come into a low state, they will succeed. So that's the, uh, the O there. Then there is also the P, productivity. We believe, like you guys, you showed up on time. We believe that we can re-envision a society where we work with time. We can introduce the hourly wage to make sure people are earning enough to live. A take-home pay, not the kind of take uh, pay now that does not take people to the gates. They need to take home pay. So that's the productivity that will bring about prosperity. And the, the, the last one is we're going to bring energy, both solar, both we have natural gas in our state. We can solve the problem of electricity so that our people will have ability to, if you decide to open a welding shop, you don't have to think about generator. There should be power. And thank God that the bills are being passed where states can generate power. And those states should be working better than it is. And I think it's time for a new direction. Change the fact that our dear country, you see, their needs of competent, qualitative leaders with capacity, with leaders with vision, leaders who have what it takes to reposition the country for effective performance. And today, I'm happy that along this line, we are raising leaders, we are raising followers who are bought into that vision to reclaim our country and to be specific to reclaim those states. There is equally no doubt that for us in those states, we have been most unfortunate to produce leaders who have not worked for the people of Edo. I say so because if you take a cursory look at the history of the state, even during, during military government in Nigeria, Edo people have been most unfortunate to always get administrators who were not from that state and they never had the mind of developing the state. When we also had democracy, it has also been unfortunate for us in Edo, we've never had the privilege of having visionary, committed, competent, and compassionate leaders that will be able to reposition Edo for greatness. And that's why for me, the 2024 global election in Edo is going to be a turning point in the history of Edo State. I say so because Labour Party, no doubt, will take over the leadership of Edo come next year. Amen. We have strategically positioned ourselves, we have strategically positioned the party to be the one that will rescue Edo State. It is therefore little wonder, like he said, Edo State is obedient. There's no good saying about it. It is not by accident. It is by design. 
and we have done the work and we believe very strongly that with the right candidates, with the right personnel, with the right strategy, we'll be able to reclaim those states and put it on the path of growth and development. For the past few years, we can say that Edo State is now backwards in terms of growth, in terms of development, in terms of infrastructure. But I'm very sure that when Labour Party takes over government next year, there will be a change in that tide. I will be able, a Labour Party government in Edo will be able to reposition the state for greatness. We will be able to restore the past glories that Edo State is known for.